So it was a Saturday morning, and I woke up not pleased about that in my parents' house because I wasn't living on my own yet because I couldn't afford to. And I woke up because there was a knock on the door, and my parents were asking if I wanted to go for coffee and a bagel with them like we normally did on a Saturday morning. And I basically said, hell no. And my mother came in and she said, I don't know what the hell's the matter with you, but you better figure it out by the time we get back. Because I hadn't been like that just for one morning. I'd been like that for a long time. I had pretty much figured out that it sucked to be me. And I had a whole lot of reasons why. I worked for an ad agency where I would come in in the morning, I was an advertising account executive, and my role was to represent the client and get them what they needed from our team. But I'd come in in the morning, and before I ever could put my stuff down on my desk, there would be Aria, our creative director, throwing stuff down the hallway because she was pissed as hell at what the client wanted because it wasn't what she wanted. I had friends who didn't want to understand that. They'd say, let's go to lunch. And I'd call them and say, you have to understand, I need to be here to deal with what I need to deal with. And they'd say, you know what, Stacy? You got to learn how to stand up for yourself. And I'd say, I am standing up for myself right now. I'm doing what I need to be doing. And there'd just be things like that happening day by day. I wasn't really seeing eye to eye with my folks either for quite a while probably because I was resentful that I still had to be in their house because I wasn't making enough money doing what I loved to do. There's a whole lot that had been built up within me, not the least of which was that my birthday was coming up within a few days, and I knew darn well no one would do a damn thing about it. Not my friends, not anyone else, because I was always the one who did for everybody else. I was the one who had to remember the birthdays, and I'd be the one who would gather people together, and I just didn't feel like doing it that particular year and that meant that I probably wasn't going to get much and I was pissed as hell about it. So when I woke up that morning and I said, hell no, I'm not going for a bagel and coffee, they left and I said, so what the hell am I going to do? And they said, well, I'm not getting out of bed. I'm done with this. I said, well, okay, Stace, well, if you're not getting out of bed, what are you going to do? I said, well, I guess I'm going to kill myself. I'm like, okay, so how are you going to do that? And my father had a gun in the house, but honestly, I was scared of guns, and I didn't know where the ammunition was. I wouldn't even know how to put the bullets in anyway. And I thought to myself, well, you could go figure it out. And I'd say, yeah, but knowing me, I'd wind up wounding myself. Then I'd have to explain to people why I was wounded. And just imagine if I didn't kill myself and I was really wounded and then I have to deal with that for the rest of my life. I'm like, no, not shooting myself. All right. Well, there's always razor blades. And I think I remembered watching a movie once where you're supposed to go in the bathtub and do it. I didn't know why. But then I thought, but you don't like the sight of blood. You'd probably faint before you killed yourself. And then you'd have to go to work with a bandage on your wrist, trying to explain to people what you did, because everybody would know that you stood the wrist, but you were just a failure at it. So no, you're not going to do that either. And then I said, well, there's pills. I didn't know what kind of pills. I figured, okay, you'd probably take a bunch of aspirin, maybe Tylenol. But I don't like to swallow pills. <laughs> and so I definitely wouldn't take them all at once. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I'd have to go one at a time. And I'd probably get bored by the time or get sick to my stomach, and that wasn't going to kill me either. I'm like, well, this is just, you know what, friggin' great. <laughs> and I had run out of excuses or ways to kill myself. So I'd like, okay, so you're not going to do that, but you're still not getting out of bed. So what are you going to do? Are you just going to lay here forever? And I had a great idea. I thought, well, you must be sick in your head, which means you could check yourself into an institution. And you could just stay there. And it would be really good, because then you have a really good excuse for not doing anything, right? And then people have to take care of you, Stace. And I, yeah, get meals, sit around, watch TV. 
probably have to do a little therapy. It doesn't sound so bad. I could just check out of life and not have to kill myself. So as I'm going through the scenario, I'm almost ready to get up and start going through, you know, the directory to find an institution near me or figure out what I have to do to get into one. But then the thought comes into my head, that therapy thing, you know, they'd probably cure you. <laughs> and then you'd have to figure out what to tell people as to why you checked out and why you were in an institution for all that time. So that's going to carry me around. Now that really sucks too. And I just laid there for a while longer and I said, so what are you going to do? This is nonsense now. And a little voice came into my head and said, well, you know that therapy thing? If it would work, why don't you just go do that? And I didn't have any other options. So I got up and I will tell you this is before the age of the internet. So I went to the Yellow Pages. And I started calling therapists on a Saturday morning, expecting to just leave a voicemail message. <clears throat> now remember, I had, didn't have enough money to go and live on my own, so I really didn't have money for a therapist. But I figured if somebody call, answered the phone, I would just tell them the truth, and maybe they'd let me come see them for one session, and maybe they would determine that I needed an institution and lock me up, and that would be that. So enough, first call. Dr. Para, I don't know where he is, but I, I know where his son is, and I intend to call him and say thank you to him for his father. Because Dr. Para answered the phone that morning, and through my tears, I explained how I was feeling. And he said, I normally don't see people on Saturdays, but I want you to come in. And I said, and I can't afford to pay you. And he said, that's okay. He said, we'll work something out. And by the time my parents came back, I was dressed and ready to go, and I was feeling better, and I said, I'm going to go see a therapist. And my mother said, good on you. She said, do you want us to drive you? And I said, no, I can drive myself. And I went, and I sat in his office in his home, and I could hear the birds chirping outside, and it was a sunny Saturday. And you know what? It was a behavior therapist. I didn't call a psychiatrist or a psychologist because I didn't want to be there for years, but I knew a behavior therapist would give me some tips. So that's what I said, give me some tips. And he said, well, before we do that, let me just tell you why you're where you're at right now. I said, okay, that would be good. He said, it's because your mind can't conceive that your life can be any way other than the way it's been. It's just that simple. Your mind is convinced that this is how your life has to be. And I said, Okay, like, duh. And he said, but that's the good news. Because you can do something about that. He said, you can start to believe that it could be different. But it's a little bit like the door is stuck. Because it's been in that spot for so long. So we have to kind of jar it a little bit. We have to put something in that once we loosen it, doesn't come back and shut all the way back again. So he said, let's start thinking about some aspects of life that you can consider to be possible. And I said, okay. He said, do you believe the sun will come up tomorrow? I said, yes. He said, why? And I said, because it does. He said, right, you don't need to have a reason. You've just proven that it comes up every morning, right? And I said, yes. And he said, so, that's what we're gonna get to. We're going to get you to the place where you believe that your life can be good every day. And this is how we're going to do it. And he said, you're going to say, there is a real possibility that. And I looked at him and I said, really? <laughs> and he said, yes. And I said, what? That there's a real possibility that what? And he said, I don't know. You fill in the blank. I said, so there's going to be a real possibility that somebody will actually throw me a birthday party? He said, yeah. He said, it's just that simple. I said, yeah. He said, but you may have to say it 400 times a day because your mind's not going to believe it. 
I said, and there's a real possibility that I could walk into the office on Monday morning and Aria won't be throwing books down the hallway at me? He said, yeah, there's a real possibility of that. Just tell your mind that. So that's, I left his office and I said, well, what do we, what's the next? And he said, I'll continue to see you for free. As long as you promise me, you'll use that phrase as often as possible. He said, that's your homework. And I said, all right, I promise. I didn't expect that it would do any good. I knew that I'd have to come back and see him again and say it didn't work. But I kept my word, because that's what I do. And on the drive back to my house, I started saying, there's a real possibility I won't get into a fight with my mother, right? And we didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't just say it once. I said it over and over again the whole time I was in the house that night and the whole next Sunday. But we didn't. We wound up having a good weekend. And on Monday, as I was on the train from the suburbs into the city of Chicago, I'm saying the whole time, there's a real possibility that I'll have a good day at work today. There's a real possibility I'll have a good day at work today. There's a real possibility I'll have a good... It was just a litany. And Aria didn't throw books at me when I came in. In fact, we actually had a conversation for the first time in at least a year at that point. And I think you can already figure out that there was a birthday party for me at work. I don't know who planned, I don't remember it, but I came in and they threw a surprise party for me. And the next Saturday when I went back to see Dr. Para, I was a different person. He said, did you do it? And I said, yes, I did. He said, how do you feel? I said, I feel like there's a real possibility that my life could be different. And I only saw him a couple of more times after that because my life was different. And shortly thereafter, I got a much better paying job and I moved out of my parents' house and I started to live a life that I deserve to have. I will tell you that for a period of time, though, I got lax at doing it. Life was going along really well, and I stopped saying constantly, there's a real possibility. And I stopped it for a period of years. And little by little, that old voice started coming back in. And it wound up lowering my energy. And some of you have heard the fact that I had adrenal failure for two years and three months. And I was in bed literally for two years and three months, except for short moments out of bed every day. It was remembering that voice of Dr. Para. One day, finally, when I was just so frustrated, I didn't know what to do. I asked God for help, and he or she brought me back to Dr. Para's office in my vision. And I said, oh, that's right. There's a real possibility that I could get well. And I started saying it again and the rest really is history. And so I say to all of you, if you're sitting here and you know that there's some aspect of your life where you don't think there's any possibility it could be different and you've become resigned to it and resentful about it, I invite you to join me in saying there's a real possibility that there's a real possibility that and then fill in your own blank and check in with me in a week and tell me if life hasn't changed for you. Thank you so very much.